Hey y'all, what's up, what's up? We're back again with another React and Draw. This time we have some interesting news about the director of Gremlins. Gremlins director thinks Baby Yoda was copied from Gizmo the Mogwai. And as you can see here is a picture of Baby Yoda and Gizmo, or rather Gizmo and Gizmo and then Baby Yoda. Um, with a striking resemblance. <laughs> but I'm gonna go on to read this. From CNN, everyone's favorite uh, news publication. <laughs> <laughs> Ratings are high on that one. Um, CNN, before we all fawned over the impossible, cute, Grogu, ba slash Baby Yoda, in the first episode of The Mandalorian, another big-eared, sweet-natured creature had already weaseled his way into our hearts. Gizmo the Mogwai, the fuzzy, wide-eyed puppet that was undoubtedly the star of 1984's horror comedy Gremlins and its sequel, and more than 30 years after the original film's debut, Gremlins director Joe Dante told San Francisco Chronicle that he thinks that Grogu, whom audience met in 2019, was entirely based off of the lovable Gizmo. Now hold on, I'm just interested, I don't know, I was just like, what, was, was Joe thinking about this this whole time and he decided like, after two seasons to come back and confront this? I guess so. You know, Baby Yoda's really hot right now because of The Mandalorian, and I mean, maybe he always thought this, because look, it, they are small. Right. They don't have this, like a similar ear structure, but then again, Yoda, adult Yoda, had the same kind of, you know, head formulation. That is true. So you just shrink them up. They are the same size. Mm-hmm. You know, they do speak in a baby voice. Baby voice, uh... Maybe. Maybe. But, I mean, I don't think you could take this to court or anything like that. Like, no. You can't prove it. Like, I don't even think it's true. I mean, a lot of things are small and cute, right? Right. I mean, I don't know. Let's see here. Baby Yoda is completely stolen and just shamelessly, would I would think. The two aliens certainly share more than a few similarities. Physically, they both got protruding ears that are disproportionately large to their diminutive frames. They communicate in coos and gurgles, and they fiercely defend their f the father figures in their lives. It is not clear whether Grogu goes bananas when doused with water, <laughs> though his predecessor Yoda lived on a swampy planet of Dagobah and only went what and only went wildly mad so he may not share this with gizmo for their part the mandalorian showrunners have named different inspirations for grogu than gizmo namely et and the film paper moon in which a con artist duo play father and child but fans have noted the resemblance between the two since grogu debuted while gizmo never achieved the levels of international adoration that grogu has in a few short years He's still got devoted fans. Gremlin star Zach Galligan told Entertainment Weekly last year that he believes his buddy is cuter, largely due to Gizmo's fuzziness and Grogu's carelessness. While Grogu is staying booked and busy in the growing galaxy of Disney Plus Star Wars series, Gizmo is making a grand return to the screen this year too. That's news on me. He'll soon appear in animated form on the HBO series Gremlin's Secrets of the Mogwai. Ironically, the new series stars the Mandalorian actress Ming-Na Wen, whose character is an ally of a tiny, a certain <laughs> tiny green Jedi in training. And that is the end of the article. Okay, so that was, that was quite interesting. You know, is it a marketing ploy? Because they're going to have a new Gremlins TV show on Netflix, and Netflix is a direct rival of Disney Plus so this kind of stirs up the pot for that situation um, it could also be because Joe Tante he's an old school director you know what I mean he's, I grew up watching his movies Gremlin, Gremlins 2 uh, Inner Space Small Soldiers Matinee right so I don't know if he's motivated by clickbait and you know marketing and stuff <laughs> like He's at retirement age right now, so I think this might have been a genuine comment that he that he felt. He probably did he feel it. Interestingly enough, my boy Cody Clark, film director, here on his uh, Twitter page, he actually had a take on this where he says, 
says the director of Piranha, which was a ripoff, which was a Jaws ripoff, but Spielberg took pity on Dante and claimed the irate studio by saying Piranha was a Jaws parody, which then unintentionally opened the floodgates to countless Jaws ripoff movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I can't argue with that, with that, with that logic. That's that's just funny, you know. Yeah, I'd have to do more research on that tidbit, but definitely there have been countless sequels and ripoffs and iterations of characters, and you know, fair game, right? As long as you change enough of it and you make sure the rest of the storyline is creative. Even the example of Piranha. You have the director of Piranha 2, James Cameron. He made the Terminator. And the Terminator was a success that spawned countless ripoffs of the Terminator, right? Uh, this is true. Not only that, the Terminator itself had a lawsuit from Harlan Ellison, sci fi writer, saying that that movie was a ripoff. <laughs> 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 of an Outer Limits episode that he wrote. I wasn't even aware of that. And I think they credit that in the Terminator. Like, how do they credit it, though? Like, they, they, they... Based off of an idea from... Oh, like it, like in the credits? like or they... Yeah, I think so. I have the research on it. It just came to me right now. That is interesting. All right. So naturally, what am I going to do? They're going to fight. It's a battle, bro. <laughs> Gizmo versus Baby Yoda. Oh, in real life? Oh, I mean, I would have to say Baby Yoda, right? Just based on... I don't know. Well, well uh, I mean, G Gizmo could kind of summon an entire army, right? That's true. Not you, know, you feed him after midnight. If you spray water on him. Right. He's going to sprout those gremlin balls and then they're going to turn into full fledged gremlins and wreck shop. And they can wreck a shop on a Mandalorian spaceship. But then Grogu has the Force, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, they have the Force. I'm just like, yeah, you got the Force. It's kind of over after that. Like. Definitely. Like, by the end of Boba Fett, he was like taking care of big creatures with the Force power. So I doubt uh, little gremlins. Muppets are gonna do anything. I don't know. Maybe uh, Joe Dante would like to uh, keep that in mind. Off. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I like Joe Dante. Right. So any jokes I make, you know, are just gags because I like Joe Dante and I like his work. Yeah, I remember. I don't believe I saw Gremlins one for some reason, but I saw Gremlins two, probably a bunch of times. I mean, it was a long time ago, but uh, it was mm -hmm. endearing. Came from that era of movies where like everything was like you know. I don't know, maybe if I was just because just I was a kid and everything was like animatronics, everything was just kind of scary. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, movies like Explorers, where the three kids are trying to build a spaceship at the junkyard. And it had that old school 80s magic that, incidentally, you know, people are trying to copy right now with shows like Stranger Things. Right. And the J.J. Abrams movie Super 8. Which reminds me, I actually have to watch Super 8. Was that any good? It was okay. It's largely forgotten, though. Like, I remember when it came out, they were like, oh man, this is a return to the Amblin uh, style of entertainment, and this is gonna. And then, like, people forgot about Super 8. Now, all that energy is on Stranger Things, you know? Ah, okay. Well, I'm doing a versus. I'm gonna I'm ad lib, look, he mad. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Rocky and Drago. Look at him. He's peeved off right now. Yeah. Grogu already looks mad over here. Remember when he didn't have a name? He was just Baby Yoda for like a good minute. True. Anything was like Grogu, and we were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> People still call him Baby Yoda. I, I, in my head, I, I, he's the, my head cannon, he's still Baby Yoda. You know what I'm saying? Gotta watch out. All this anger is going to turn Baby Yoda to the dark side. No amount of Gremlins is going to stop that. I'm glad Gremlins is coming back in some form, you know? That franchise has been put like in the shoebox for a while. True. That's why I was surprised to read the article. Like I'm like, wait, there's... Could it be another Gremlins? I was kind of like, oh, okay. 
Like, I actually want to see it. Might as well come back for the throwback. <laughs> yeah, why not? It's throwback times. Throwback season. You know, nostalgia is huge right now. Gotta get that paper. <laughs> well, that is the time for all reboots. And look, look at them go. Let's be mad. Well, no, they're not about to be. They're already mad. Yeah, <laughs> it's a showdown. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's like the most adorable showdown of all time. <laughs> Come on. In real Love life, it. they'll be friends. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, they would be friends. But you have a crossover. You know, they got the multiverses going on. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the multiverse of, I don't know, cuteness or something. I, I, would, I would say so. Sounds good to me. Anyway, y'all, here's my silly take on this whole matter. This is a meme in the making. <laughs> it probably is. All right, y'all, so that's it. So until next time, and the next react, peace out. Peace.